Oh, okay. I think we're live now. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday Morning Mastermind. I'm Samantha Studebaker Carl, uh, broadcasting to you live from a beautiful Southwest Georgia, and I'm here with my friends Christina and Danielle and Donna and Jason and Dan and Sandy. And um, we all are just here discussing, every, well, let me say, I'm losing my train of thought here, so let me just jump back where I need to be. First of all, if you have found this page, um, I, you could have found it anywhere on the internet at this point. We have people sharing our event page all over the place, so I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page so that you can comment and we'll see your comment. So if you are on Google+, Plus. Um, or wherever you happen to be, jump to SaturdayMorningMastermind.com. That's SaturdayMorningMastermind.com. It's all one word. And that will, will bring you to our main Google Plus event page where you can comment below the video and let us know. You know, I, I'd love to hear from you during this conversation because the topic that we're going to be talking about today is, is going to be very uh, good for everybody to kind of interact and share their own experiences. Now, if you're on mobile and you can't see this, hopefully uh, you will see the link below this video on our event page that is the direct U YouTube link. Um, but of course, if you're on mobile and you can't see this video, you won't even know that I'm saying this, so hopefully <laughs> you'll just see the link and then you'll find the replay or whatever. Um, so anyway, um, let's see. Okay, so anyway, we are part of the Mindset Mastery Collective, which is a Google Plus community. And we've been doing this hangout now for about two years. And right now we are studying the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People in the Digital Age by Dale Carnegie. And we are in chapter, let's see here. We're in part nine of chapter three, I believe, or vice versa. Part three, chapter nine, share your journey. But before we get into the book, I want to give everybody an opportunity to introduce themselves. And for those of you who are watching, go ahead and comment on the page. Let us know where you're hanging out from. Is this your first time? Have you been here before? And, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to Sandy, and you can introduce yourself. And I'll mute out. Good morning, Sandy Root here in Miami Beach, Florida, and uh, as always, looking forward to the discussion. Good morning, this is Danielle DeLyons in Anaheim, California, and like Sandy, I'm excited about today. This is something I love to do, talk about, so look forward to talking to everybody. Good morning, everyone. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, Jason Roberts. Um, sorry about that, Dan. It's great no, to be no here. Problem. Looking forward to the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Dan Smith. I live in Boise, Idaho, and uh, it's going to be a beautiful, rainy day here today, so glad you're here. Hello, everybody. Christina Irvin here in Northeast Tennessee. Uh, this this chapter in particular, I'm very excited to discuss, so let's hop into it. Oh, sorry about that. I was on mute. Good, good morning. I'm, I'm like everyone else. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Donna Allen, Raleigh, North Carolina. Ex excited about the discussion this morning. Excited. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome to everybody. Let's see who's hanging out with us here. Welcome, Rhonda. Welcome, Lou. Adelia. Met, I'm not sure if Met's jumping on here or not. He made a comment the other day, so thanks, Met. I appreciate you jumping in into the conversation. Now, as we go through this topic this morning, guys, I really want everybody to kind of share your perspective on this. This this topic is a little bit. Um, I don't want to say it's different than what we've talked about before, but. Um, what I will say about it is that I don't know everything on this topic, you know? And so a lot of times we find ourselves just kind of broadcasting our opinions and what we think, and, and I think that m many of us on the panel um, do have a lot to add, and I look forward to hearing from you on that. Um, but for those of you who are out there in the internet world, you know, tell us what your experience has been as well, because this chapter is about sharing your story to help you connect with people, um, either to grow your business or just in, in general relationships, but um, for the most part, since most of us are running some kind of a home business of some sort and we're out there publicly on the internet, um, 
this chapter talks about sharing your story and how that can benefit you. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you know whoever wants to jump out in the conversation this morning, and just because you know my thing is is that I'm been you know I've been more shy throughout my life than I have anything else, and I've been working on owning that, particularly by doing this hangout. And um, but sharing my story has not been the easiest thing for me because storytelling doesn't come naturally. I'm more of a get to the point and share the facts with me um, versus telling stories. And so even you know in general life, sitting around the campfire, storytelling is not something that comes natural. And so I really want to see you know what you guys have to say. You know how do you share your story? What um, Maybe we can start the conversation with what do you think the pow most powerful lesson is about this chapter, and um, and then we can kind of get into some suggestions for how to how to share your story. So, um, who wants to jump out first? Uh, you know me; I don't mind getting the party started. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do it. <laughs> I actually. Uh, I don't typically like write in my books. I don't know why. I mean, I understand you're supposed to. That, like, that's part of it. But I don't know. I have a thing about it. But for some reason, there was this one particular line that made me like mark in my book. And um, it's over on page 163, and it says, And when a message is a mission, they will tell your story to anyone who will hear it, and even the stranger at an airport. And then that really... And then it says, and by doing that, uh, they become your strongest advocates in marketing your product. For me, that drives home the importance um, of storytelling right there. Um, you know, when, as it relates to those of us in a home business, you know, uh, really we have many of us behind, you know, our why is a big mission. And, you know, kind of jumping off on that, statement that you made about being shy all your life and kind of in straight to the point. Here's the thing. When you when you are talking about that, you know, one of my mentors says that your mess is your is your message. When you're talking about that, when you form a story about that, you naturally find your audience, right? And they start singing your song for you to the industry. And I think that that's something that most people um, in, in business and especially particularly in home business don't ever hone in on because that is the thing that they try to steer themselves away from um, for whatever reason they feel like it, it's a negative so they should you know steer attention away from it rather than talking about it realizing that there are thousands of people feeling the same way. That's such a great point Christina you know and what's interesting to me is that even though I haven't like been purposely going out there and sharing my story because we do the Saturday morning mastermind and we kind of inadvertently share little bits of our lives and that sort of thing is that um, you know people have just kind of shown up and decided that they want to be a part of this and I just uh, you know like all of you <laughs> You know, I mean, I just started this, and and I had a few people that I started out with, but then you know they kind of went and did their own things, and then all of a sudden I have this great group of of all of you guys who have just stuck with me this whole time, and it's I think it's because you know we just all resonate together, and um, you know I don't know maybe that's maybe it's because I oh somebody else jump out share something. <laughs> I was just Thank thinking you. of the. Uh, was somebody else going to jump in? Sandy, were you jumping in, hun? I looked like I was just saying it looked like Dan was talking, but he's muted. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, I, I was muted. <laughs> I apologize. But if you want to jump out, Daniel, go go ahead and, and uh, ladies first. I mean, you know. <laughs> no, I thought the same thing too, and then I wasn't sure. So go ahead, Dan. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, yeah, my last name's Smith, and uh, my particular branch of the Smiths, the famous Smiths of Idaho, you know. Um, anyway, all my life growing up, I heard the Smiths are quiet, and um, and that does run in my bloodline. I mean, I my father died when I was ten years old, and and going back, you know, I can remember back to the age of three, and honestly, I can't account for 150 words that my father said to me in in the ten years from birth until 
until he died. And so um, I have that in my background. And part of the reason why I approach you, Samantha, about me jumping onto your call here is that I can just burrow into <clears throat> my own little world. And it's really a stretch. I, I shared that in the pre-discussion uh, that, that uh, you know, that <clears throat> It is, it is my natural tendency to be quiet. It is my, you know, back in my days when I was, was a, even when I was partying really hard back when I was a lot younger, you know, I'd go to a party, but I would find a corner to where I had uh, a wall on each side of me. And so if I had to take on a frontal attack, you know, I, nobody could get, from, you know, get to me from the sides or the back. You know? So that's my natural tendency. And, and really, it's, it's, it's been a stretch for me to open up and I mean I, I've shared some things on on this call that I, or this webinar that I just don't share and you know and and it's it's been a real practice for me here um, I, I really like your comments Samantha in, in the pre-discussion you know that that uh, you know that that you are quiet and shy and 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 that's been my tendency all my life and so just opening up and uh, Really, letting other people into my world is is um, it's a stretch for me because that natural tendency is for me to uh, you know I don't need a lot of people around in order for me to be happy. I mean I'm a homebody. I love being at home. Uh, I got a little over an acre. I like going out and working in the dirt and, or going out in my shop and cutting up wood and nailing things together. And and uh, I'm perfectly happy just doing that. And it's it is a stretch for me to open up my my life and and you know share publicly you know different uh, stories about things that I've been through or, or this and that and the other so anyways you know people people can identify with 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 what you say and uh, um, because we all share common ex experiences and I, I want to hear the struggle that other people have been through because that gives me hope so now I'm just rambling I'll turn it over to somebody else that has something really to say I don't, I don't know if we're frozen or not, but um, you you actually brought up something um, in what you just said that really kind of resonated with me, and, and as far as you know, not having a a lot to say or 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 feeling like you don't have your own story, and i you know, uh, the beauty about um, home businesses and and, and pr particularly those like in network marketing or or multi level marketing is. You've always got a, someone else's story that you can draw for, from, right? And so, um, until you figure out what your voice is, until you figure out what your story is, until you figure out how to package it just right, you know, it's always good to to sort of find that that one or three stories that resonates with you about your product or service, not necessarily um, that resonates with you personally, you know, but about your product or service as you can relate it to someone else when you're talking to it and then that is the story that you can use in it and it can become your own um, in just the way that you uh, convey the story. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? I totally agree with you on that Christina and, and um, this last company I became a part of about two years ago that's how I started I did have a little bit of a story but I didn't know how to tell my story yet with the products etc and the company but I was hearing all the other stories so I automatically took the ones that were like goals I had for myself other people that had already attained them and said you know let me tell you about so-and-so and what happened for them and it excites me because that gives me the hope and belief I can get there and so you're kind of passing it on and giving them that same hope and they see your belief system and your excitement and that excites them as well. Um, it's something that was taught to me um, a few years back and it probably <clears throat> really influenced me quite a bit was uh, when I came into one company back about 13 years ago, the young man that brought me in, second time I went to an event, <clears throat> he said, Danielle, come here. And it was before the event started. And there was about a thousand people going to be there. And he took me up on the stage and he says, I want you to stand here and visualize. And I want you to think about your story because you're going to influence rooms of people this size 
and you're going to make them cry when they hear your story. You're going to you're going to inspire them. You're going to change their life. And that kind of instilled in me that that understanding of how important your story is. And and there are people out there that your story is unique to you and you should share it with the world. There's no person that should stay small and not let their light shine. It's part of the saying, one of my favorite quotes, that you let others feel that they're more important and you're not equally important. Everyone was created for a purpose. They each have their own unique story. Yet it resonates again with that particular group of people that when they hear it, it's the best story they've ever heard in their whole life. So we each have something to share with the world. That's a great point. I, uh, you know, we we don't know who we're going to affect with our stories, and I, you know, I, I'm I resonate actually with Dan. I'm very shy, we, and um, I still am, and it's amazes it amazes me too sometimes uh, because I. I will sort of pop out of my shell, so to speak, at at some really odd times and just be compelled to to speak, you know, kind of like this, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm I'm comfortable in my in my uh, you know in my comfort zone, and I could I could very easily just sit back and listen to to all the wonderful things you guys say and and really get you know impacted, but you know I. I guess there's uh, something that's intangible uh, or intangible about uh, you know about uh, sharing your story and having a having a connection be made back to you from that. You know, it it just reminds me of the times where maybe you're sitting in a public place and there's a stranger next to you. You might strike up a conversation, or they might strike up a conversation with you about something so abstract and or or um, you know off topic. Or you know, outside the situation, and uh, you know, a connection can be found. Um, so it's really you know this whole this this part of um, of communicating and getting a getting my message out. It's definitely something I have to work on. So um, I think uh, it seems to me like we're all kind of experiencing it at one level or or another, but. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to to uh, come out here and share my story a little bit, and hopefully I'll I'll get better at it. So, thanks a lot. I think it's funny because I, I I think a lot of us share that we were you know we're quiet, we're shy, and, and you know I shared that before that I've also been painfully shy in the past and. Um, you know how we all appeared on this panel because we it's like an attraction marketing when we sharing our stories you attract the people that you resonate with and connect with and I think that's why when you know Samantha did start the group maybe we weren't connecting on the same level and then it kept mushing around till the right people came and now it's really got this core and um, um, you know stories connect emotions and humans are emotional beings so I think that's why we, it, our core desires and struggles and the things that we've been to, we, we, we like to see that vulnerability and humanity in other people. That's what connects us. And uh, it's funny because Samantha interviewed me about a year ago, and I just got a comment on this video. And the girl who commented on it realized she watched it exactly a year after it was made, and we were talking about synchronicity and all this stuff. But the title of the video uh, that Samantha interviewed me in is, is called Painfully Shy Introvert to Wild Woman. And it's one of my most viewed uh, videos on YouTube. I just looked at it while you were talking a little bit just to see. And it's almost at 500 views. And because I think that people are drawn to that because they want to know what, what's her story. You know, I could have probably 300 videos on YouTube about business, about self-improvement about the products and then but people are really like okay what's she really about and they're really drawn to that and you know I was looking at some of the comments just now too on it it's like they're like you're so courageous you're I love your vulnerability and I think people really like to see that because then they know that they have that in them as well they have they can be vulnerable around you they can uh, step into their courage as well and um, it helps them be able to share their story as well when we're able to share our stories. And I 
noticed that on Facebook as well when I would, you know, when I post maybe something from somebody else, like a quote from somebody else or, um, you know, anything uh, versus sharing something from me that may be something going on in my life where I'm sharing my vulnerability and a little bit about my story and sort of bringing it into the lesson that I can share with others. People, I get so many comments and likes on those ones when I'm more sharing from who I am. So really people connect to that. They want to know who are you and I want to know who are you. So I think it's uh, just humanity and, and that emotional need that we have to connect. Um, the story really brings that out with the emotions and that connection in that way. So that's my experience. I'm glad you brought that up, Sandy. The um, <clears throat> that video, we had a good time making that, and um, and that that is awesome. That it's like one of the most viewed videos on your channel, and that really drives this point home that how important it is and how people truly want to know about you. But what um, what I also thought that was really interesting about what you just said is how you're sharing, you know, parts, little bits of your story by sharing a lesson and then sharing your experience that um, you know is what you learned from the lesson on it. I think that's an important thing there as well and w just, just like when Danielle shared that little story of her um, her sponsor getting her up on stage I mean that's just a little blip of what has happened in her life and um, and that you know and that's what I'm starting to realize more and more is that it's not like you have to go out every day and tell your whole life story it's sharing little bits of your story in helping people learn a lesson or helping people you know shift from one's mindset to another or or is that that sort of thing and and I think Danielle when you were talking in the pre mastermind discussion you mentioned kind of some methods uh, the form method and um, and how you could take that and share your story you want to elaborate on that a little bit Did, did I freeze? Yeah. Oh, there am you I are. Back? Yeah, I can. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. It's it's this internet, and I only I you kind of chopped out Samantha right there at the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Did you want me to talk about form? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just saying um, that you kind of shared some details in the in the pre-mastermind discussion and it would be great if you wanted to elaborate on some different ways that people could take the form method and share their story. Yeah, I do it quite frequently and it, it draws people out a lot of times and gets them to open up and tell me their story because like a lot of us here, we're shy. We're not used to having an audience or somebody that really is sincerely interested in knowing who we are. And so through form, the F stands for family. Hey, so do you have a family? You know what? I'm a, I'm a single mom, five kids. I have four boys, and I'll tell the ages, and I have one daughter. She's this age. I'm a grandma. I have a granddaughter. And boom, that a lot of times will get them flowing, and they'll start talking. Oh, so how do you like being a mom? How do you like being a grandpa? Are you going to have any more kids? Wow, your kids are, you know, so you get them engaging and opening up their, their life to you that way. Um, some people, a lot of times with men, it's easier to talk about their occupation or, or things that they enjoy doing. Um, so I use occupation, which is the O, or R, R, the recreation. And so what kind of work are you in? What kind of job do you have? How long, how long have you been there? You know what? i got to tell you, I feel very blessed. Um, I've been able to work from home for myself for the past 13 years. Really? Oh, lucky you. No boss? And so it gets them and, yeah, you know, would you want to change that? So then I engage them in such a way that it opens a door for those in business to possibly be able to share your opportunity with them because then you know where their little hot button is, that that's something that emotionally is tied to their story, so that's a great way for you to, to open that door. Um, I was sharing a story the other day with a group of people uh, under recreation. I was talking to a gentleman in Canada. He uh, loves to snowmobile. He's got guitars. He has so many interests. 
and he has so many hobbies, but it's a time factor for him. And so I kind of posed a question to him to draw him out again. And like, you know, if you had more time to enjoy snowmobiling, what would you what would you do to get yourself there? Kind of those kinds of questions. And I'll tell him, I'll tell you, it's wonderful not waking up to an alarm clock. And in fact, I overslept yesterday. Oversleeping for me, 7:30 in the morning. And so, you know, I kind of turn it into a joke, and I share stories about what's going on and paint a picture in their mind of what it would be like to be here. And in telling those little tiny stories, they don't have to be really deep and personal, but you can just tell things to people about your story that you know will resonate with what is not good for them. Because then you can give them a more positive light on what could be. And so a form works really well for that. And then the last is motivation. What would motivate you to change the way things are for yourself right now? Or what motivates you in life? What drives you? How do you do that every day? My goodness. I, you know, I really feel for the people. I was there myself. I used to work 60 to 80 hour work weeks. I had no life. I never saw my kids. I always felt guilty. I had living nannies raising my kids. I was never going to enjoy my house. Man, everybody else enjoyed everything I was paying for. And so, you know, and that motivated me. I wanted to change something in my life. And that little tiny story of an emotion that relates to people turns them around and saying, you know, I feel that way too, and I, I, I want something better. Well, you know what? Guess what? I know how you feel because I felt that way, and what I found, and that's a feel felt found. That's kind of another part of it. I found a solution. Would you like to hear my story? And if you've listened to Jim Rohn, uh, anybody that's here that's listened to some of his audios, that's one of his lines that he used for years is, would you like to hear my story? And because you've engaged them, you've got their attention, yes, tell me more, I want to know. Don't, don't hold back your story because you may be the solution they've prayed and prayed and prayed for and through hearing some part of your story, you change their life. I hope that was uh, helpful. That, that was awesome. Uh, there were so many points in there that I kind of was like, oh, I want to comment on that. Oh, I want to comment on that. Um, that was awesome. You know, the thing that is interesting is that um, let's, re let's relate this book back to being in the digital age, right? <laughs> because I, you know, I did a, a, a blog post about this uh, this week. You know, we too often on the Internet are so busy with the me, 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 you know, and the let me paste my link here and let me get my story out here. Oh, there's somebody that said they want they're looking for a business opportunity. I gotta pounce on them before anybody else does. And what we forget to do is that literally form a lot of times you don't even have to say it if you would take the time to go to somebody's about me page and just check it out. So that's one one thing as a as someone who is looking to maybe prospect to grow their business that we should start doing more. In the digital age, it's already out there. Just go down their wall. They're telling you what their pains are in their wall. They're telling you what you're, they're frustrated about. They're telling you that they're sick of work. They're telling you that some creep on the way home, you know, side swiped them. They, they're telling you their pains already. But we don't take the time to leverage the digital age. And then on the flip side, my gosh, if you are out there, you're looking to be in a business opportunity, then fill out your About Me page. <laughs> like, that's one way. If you're a shy person, the more that you put in your About Me profile, the more somebody has the opportunity to connect with you on, and they will reach out to you instead of you having to reach out to anybody else, and that helps take care of that situation. That's my point. <laughs> I think that's a great point, Christina, especially the part about, you know, checking out other people's about page before you start to try and engage them. You know, I can't tell you how many times, I mean thousands of times, there's always people that are hitting me up with some canned response kind of message or something they've gotten from their upline that's just like, 
hey, I have this great deal, and you got to check it out, and it's about blah, blah, blah. I don't even know what it is. Like a makeup company, right? You know, obviously, you haven't looked at any of my pictures. You haven't checked me out in any way, shape, or form to see that I don't even wear makeup, you know? I mean, <laughs> or, or, you know, some things like that. And, and it's funny to me that people don't take the time, but they... I think that's why we do these hangouts is to help people realize that it's more than just show, you know, sticking your pitch out there. It's about connecting with people and getting to know them and helping them get to know you. Um, so I think that's just a, a great point, Christine, that you mentioned about checking out people's pages before you even start to engage with them. Um, so awesome, awesome, awesome. Anybody else? Uh, let me jump out here and just say, on this last, I know I'm on the last page, which I read, did read the chapter, and everybody made some great points. Um, this this one sentence in here it reads, "When your journey is our, when your journey is our journey, we are both compelled to see where it goes." Uh, that kind of you know sums up the thing for me because um, you know when you when you are vulnerable, people can see that. But then I've had some to say to me, Donna, we can't hardly find you. Maybe I don't want to be found. At one time, I didn't really want to be found. I did not because I felt like um, until I was, because how I came across this, this site right here, I think I shared it with you before, is it was an ideal, it's kind of like it was inside, but it was like I don't like the lead in the forefront. I do well blending in and that that just speaks volumes because when I saw Samantha your video out there talking about a book and I love to read that's what attracted me I love to read because when I read one certain book a few, a few years back it sort of like revived me because my mom and dad was my world that's all I had that's all I ever known and when they when they when they were no, no longer here I felt lost I was totally what do I do? Where do I go? I was detached, and that and I read a book a while back. We shared one day. <laughs> it brought me back. I mean, I wasn't near suicide, nothing like that, but I was really down on myself. I was like, okay, Donna, you can't do this. You, you, you got to come out. You got to be, be you. You know, you got to, you got purpose. Well, I got my dogs, but yeah, I got purpose. I don't have children, but yeah, I got purpose. Okay. <laughs> That's really good because Donna, guess what? So like now, like I just kind of want to drive home because people can really use that as a great example of um, if you're just telling your story, then the the business building part becomes natural because there are so many people out there that are in that place and really are just longing, just need some human connection and you naturally, there are so many people who want to be in a business just because it gives them an opportunity to connect with people. I'll put this out here. I, it's, it's, I know I'm kind of thinking it out loud here, but um, as far as emotions, I experience this every once in a while, and I'm just curious if other people experience this as well. But every once in a while, I'll see something, I'll hear something, I'll smell something, um, some, some different form of sense that will be stimulated. And I can remember a feeling that I had somewhere back in my life. It, it may have been when I was five, may have been when I was, you know, whatever, 10, 15, you know, whatever. But all of a sudden, you, you recognize a feeling you recognize an emotion, you recognize something that you've experienced before. You don't know when you experienced it, or it's, I, yeah, I mean, I'm familiar with the word deja vu, and um, I don't know, you know, in, in that realm, whatever, but uh, you have one of those, what you call a deja vu moments when you, you remember something that has, something you felt, and you can't put your hand on it, but it's a it's it's a familiar feeling and a, it's a familiar emotion, uh, just something that you don't experience on a day to day basis, and yet you're familiar with it, but you don't know when and you don't know why. And I think that that when when we're sharing our stories, when we're sharing these emotions, the different things that we've gone through in life, uh, 
you know, that one time you got humiliated when you was in sixth grade, you know, <laughs> whatever, and and it dredges up these feelings, and 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 that's the connection that when 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 you're telling your story or when you're hearing somebody else's story, that connection that you make, that re, re, you know, here here's an example. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with the the store Fred Myers, but um, we have what's called Fred Meyer stores here in in, in in Boise. And every year, that like uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, they have this big uh, uh, advertising campaign to sell their food. Well, uh, what what that campaign is 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 you got a big family sitting around the table, and there's a great big turkey, and there's the whole spread, the mashed potatoes and the gravy and uh, corn and all of it, and and it's looking good, and you can almost smell it. And that's the ideal family, and and they're all around the table. They're all enjoying life. They're enjoying each other. The reality <laughs> is not always what what that ideal is. You know, there might be strife in your family, but but you see that that uh, that advertisement on television, and it's that reminder of what life should be like, what life could be like, or or you hear a story about a big. You know, when they used to have the big barn raisings where, you know, um, Farmer John's barn burned down, well, then everybody, the whole community came together on, on a uh, Friday or Saturday and, and they all quit their own work and they came out together and they raised his barn again. And, and so where we had this great loss, all of a sudden he had this great gain. And, and that stirs this emotion in us that that's what life is supposed to be like. And that's what the connection of human beings is supposed to be like with each other. And so when you're sharing your story, the people that you're sharing your story with are hearing this connection and they're, they're experiencing these experiences that they can't quite put their hand on it, but subconsciously they know that they resonate with that. So anyways, I'll, I'll put it out there and I'll let somebody else comment on it. I love that, Dan, and you know that that is right on point with uh, emotions and how it brings it back around when you relate in those ways. That deja vu feeling, and you're not sure. Um, I was just thinking about the other day. I was relating to a group of moms that have small kids at home right now, and they're trying to learn how to grow a business from home and balance the home and the the, the husband and the meals and the cleaning and all the other parts of life plus grow a business and you know it was such a relief to see their faces I was watching their faces because I just related to them and said hey I wasn't where I am right now back a few years ago it was nothing like where I'm at right now I was ready to kill my kids some days you know I was just being honest I said man there were days I literally wanted to get the gun out and put myself out of my own misery and see how how Dan's cracking up because that actually related to several other moms in the group and they were like, yes, thank you for sharing that. I'm not the only one that wants to kill their kids or kill themselves. And so the more that we get to the emotion of a lot of the feelings we all have, where you just say, I quit, I want to walk out the door, I'm done with y'all, and you can say that to people. They go, oh my gosh, she went through and she's still here and her kids are still alive. I, I can make it, you know. So just little things like that make a big difference. Yeah, um, you know, this discussion really kind of reminds me, of, I started thinking about our previous, like, probably two discussions um, because I figured maybe we could take a moment, if, if it's okay with you, Samantha, and sort of kind of relate it back to, um, you know, engaging with empathy and appealing to the noble motives, right? And how well, you know, story actually does that. Um, it, you know, I think that might be a good topic. What do you think, Samantha, in the panel? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, and actually, I do kind of have a comment on that, but if you have something you want to share first, go ahead. Oh, no, not at all. I was just throwing it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, here's a, here's kind of a thought, and this is not relating to the business. This is actually relating to relationships and, um, I don't know, motivation and whatnot. And, of course, we're talking about kids. And, you know, in one of the previous sessions, we were talking about 
appealing to a person's nobility. And I guess that was last week. I wasn't even on that one, was I? <laughs> so I had my massive migraine that I was dealing with. But um, I, so I didn't get to share this this story. But um, the thing is, is that um, my my son and I, <clears throat> you know, when we were when he was coming into his teenage age and and you know, kind of you know, seeing who he was as a person and and that sort of thing, you know, we, we kind of butt heads quite a bit. And um, it wasn't until I started to realize that he and I were so much alike that in the way that we think that um, once I realized he thinks, you know, he has that same kind of thought process that I did and, and um, you know, so then I started kind of thinking about how I was at that age and that sort of thing and, and because I was able to relate to him that way, I could also have conversations with him in a way that I knew would make a difference to him and who, who would actually influence him in a positive way and for and as an example I um, one of the things was is he got his driver's license and um, he's really smart he's very conscientious and and yet at the same time he's a young teenage boy right and you know the statistics say that young teenage boys are have the highest accident rates and they have the the lowest you know the, the most getting in trouble rates and and highest tickets all those different things and so I appealed to his nobler side and was like you are so smart you are one of the smartest most mature kids of your age of of your age group you're so much smarter and so much more mature than so many kids that that um, that I that we see every day and I'm like and I know that you know because you have learned how to drive from you know your dad and I and your dad's a commercial truck driver and and you have all of this knowledge that these other kids don't have I know that you're going to be one of the safest drivers and I know that you're, you're going to set the biggest best example for so many of these other kids that are out there that everybody's going to look up to you and you know and so I kind of had that conversation with him and and because of that, he has done really, really well. I mean, amazingly well for a young person. And what's funny is that he actually, when he, he had this one girlfriend, that um, he would go and visit her, and his dad, and her dad, her dad would say, I want you to drive you both around in our car. You know? I'm like, what parent says that to a teenage boy, you know, and the and the daughter? It just amazed me. I'm like, of course, I, that makes complete sense, you know, babe, because you're so you're so much you're such a great driver, and you're you know. So anyway, that was kind of that thing, and that and so, but I p appealed to him in a story kind of way, if you will, because I talked about how you know other people are going to look up to him and, and other people are going to um, you know see him as such a great driver and I knew that if I kind of put that into his brain that he would act that out right so that's my thought on that so that's like an example of using story to appeal to the nobler side right to motivate the nobler side and you and you use some NLP in that I mean let's just put but that's a way that you could do it for the good right like that's, I guess my point is bringing back previous conversation. You can use story in a good, healthy, empowering way. Absolutely. I just had this quote come through this morning. Um, I'm subscribed to the, uh, well, what is this? It's a Nightingale Conant um, newsletter or whatever. But anyway, I get a quote every day. And the quote kind of rung rung true with you know kind of what we're talking about it says think twice before you speak because your words and influence will plant the seed of either success or failure in the mind of another and so if we're talking about planting words or planting ideas of success in people then using these stories to show them you know what they can accomplish and who they can be and and you know and appealing to that nobler side of them knowing that you can overcome this you I have overcome it, so you can do it too. So that's kind of the that's my thought on that. Do you mind putting that. that in the note, the notes, to you, that quote? Sorry, what did you say? Do you mind to put that quote in the notes? That was good stuff right there. Yeah, I'm just all kind yeah, of the, requesting things today, aren't? <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. I'll yeah, I'll put it on the event page, and then um, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, or just what? In the event. Okay, cool. I'll post it. You know, Samantha, you just did something so very, very, very awesome. 
and you just naturally shared a part of your life with everybody here. You didn't think about it. It's a, a personal part of your life, but what a great way. You may have helped a, a parent out there today that is like freaking out because their kid's going to start driving, and because of the way you just shared your story and everything, they're like, oh my goodness, that's the way to do it. I'm going to do that now because I heard Samantha's story. And that's where the value comes in in our story so very, very many times. I sit here going, I got one getting ready to drive, and I didn't do that with the other ones. This one's going to get the whoop tank from Mama this way. Okay. And I'm going to know <laughs> what it. cause in doing it. But, you know, at the same time, it's like, that's brilliant. I sat there thinking to myself, God, that's so brilliant. And if you hadn't shared the story that way, I wouldn't maybe have gone that direction. But it was perfect. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh. I can mention this last week. It could have been the week before, but um, there was a leader that, that I used to follow. And I, I still got a bunch of his tapes. I still listen to them. But um, the, one of the things that I noticed it, for crowd control at, at big meetings, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking the biggest meeting I was ever at, there was 20,000 people there. And, and, you know, that's a lot of people. And as a form of crowd control, just exactly what you talked about, Samantha, I, I, I just remember him talking about how people in this organization are such good people that they would never be rude to the hotel staff or to the food service people. And, and really just making that appeal to the to the higher human nature that, um, hey, we're part of this organization, and this organization is known by its people, and we're the people of this organization, so we need to really be on our best behavior. And and just, you know, I, I just, I remember that standing out to me, that this leader used that as a form of crowd control. You know, that there's, there's positive ways of cr controlling a crowd, and there's negative ways of controlling a crowd. And, and uh, you know, a negative way that you can c control a, a crowd is through fear, fear tactics. You know, if you do this, then this is going to happen. You know, and then on the positive light is is appealing to the higher human nature that you know that obviously you're part of this organization and only the only the best join this organization. And so we you know we really expect you to be on your best behavior here. So anyway, I'll let somebody else speak. Wow, yeah, I just want to say, yeah, that uh, was a great example, like you said, Daniel, um, and uh, Samantha, when you were talking about that, I, I probably, you know, a dozen or so different um, <laughs> events in my life or s situations where I think my mom or someone of authority <laughs> used, used that trick on me as well. Um, that's, that's really great, you know. You know, highlighting someone's abilities and then saying this is why I expect this of you and getting them to make that realization that they do have it in them to accomplish you know what's uh, expected of them um, you know it's something they can't deny once you put it in front of them then it's like wow it's like you know you didn't give her give your son any room to to okay well I can I can mess around and do donuts a little bit here and there and you know it's like but now, you know, it's like, hey, I know better. I can't be doing that sort of stuff. My mom expects more of me, you know. And, wow, that's, yeah, very powerful. And like Daniel said, you've, that's great that you brought that up. Definitely, definitely something that can help people out there. So thanks for that. Great example. You know, I think that we have a, just one more thing that would be really good to bring out before we're done today. And... And that is that everybody uh, has a different way of doing things, right? A different way of telling a story. So, and you don't have to absolutely subscribe to, you know, my way of telling a story. I mean, clearly, this is a very introverted panel, uh, with the exception of Danielle, probably. <laughs> I would think everybody on this panel is quite introverted, and most people would think that I'm extremely extroverted, and I'm not. Um, but I think. But we all clearly have a different way of telling a story, right? Um, and I think that so often people 
get stuck with storytelling because they see they you know if they're in a an, a business opportunity you know this leader who's magnanimous gets up on stage and they got the swag and they tell the story just with ease and good lord they're like a car salesman they can pull a story to fit every situation at any time and you feel like you kind of have to do that like I listen to all of us tell the story and we're all quite emotional we have an emotional attachment with our stories. Danielle seems to be able to pull a story out of anywhere. It looks like she's a pro at it, right? But Dan and Jason, you guys are real deep with your emotion of it. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe Samantha has a different way and Sandy has a different way. I have a different way. I guess my point is, is it's okay to be you and tell your story the way you tell a story. I mean, we could all tell a story and it will absolutely come out a different way. I appreciate that a lot, and I know it seems like that. I have emotions too. <laughs> I hope you don't know, have emotions. I'm just saying that you're very, you're very, you're very good and fluid with moving people through the story, right? And and I think that comes with experience and time and being and exactly what you're saying because of who you've been around. It kind of teaches you different forms, but. I really will say that this is one of the things about being a part of this panel that has really touched my heart is the depth of how much each of you open up in your emotions and we all get teared up at times when we're telling different parts of our life or how it affects us or things that were very painful to us and there's those moments man I've I've made people ball their brains out you know and and I've gotten choked up on stages too and you know and so we we have those different moments in life I think I try to bring that light to it and keep the bounce there part you know and and that's one of the reasons why this panel works so well together is because there's there there is there's a balance of everybody's personalities and a different way of expressing themselves so we're actually appealing to a, a large audience and I know that's one of the reasons we continue to grow stronger and bigger all the time can I hop out there real quick, Samantha? Can I ask a question to the panel? Uh, have you, about when you have you ever heard someone says, "Well, your first impression is your last impression." I now this is me personally. I, I said to someone one time before, I totally I, I, I respect your opinion and what you say, but I disagree with that to the point that you haven't really you haven't heard my story. You don't know me don't take my first impression as a lasting impression. Anybody want to say anything about that? Yeah, I'll jump out. You know, I, I've had experience where, and it's easy to judge people. You look at somebody and you kind of size them up, you know, and, and uh, I really learned that from my mother. I mean, she she would look at people and she'd make up this huge elaborate story about people and the way that they probably lived and and they probably didn't live anything like that you know but but you know it's it's easy to look at somebody and, and kind of size them up you know like oh maybe the way they wear their hair maybe the way that they're um, the clothes that they wear or whatever but then maybe you're into a situation where you're going to talk to them for just four or five minutes and they say something that you resonate with and instantly you fall in love with this person and and the reason why you fall in love with them is, is like well gosh now I understand why you know that that maybe your clothes are the way they are um, you know for I used to party really really hard and and it, when I was younger and uh, I'll share a little bit of my story. I, 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 I grew up in a Christian home, but, but what I talked about crowd control earlier, this, this Christian church, the church that I grew up in, they used fear tactics. And, 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 and uh, I think, Samantha, I think you can identify with this because of some of the things that I heard you say. But, but uh, you know, like right now, I don't qualify to go to, hair, to heaven because my hair's too long. My hair's on my ears, and, and everybody knows that if you're a man, if your hair touches your ears, and Jason, oh my gosh, look at the hair that you've got there, dude. You know, you can't go to heaven because your hair's too long, okay? And, and that's what I grew up with, and, and just, oh, uh, this legalism, you know? And, 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 and so when I came out of that, it's like, 
I'm going to boogie till I puke, you know, and, and that was the life that I lived for quite a few years. And and then I I finally almost had myself destroyed, and so I, I actually became a Christian, and I embraced what I rejected for so long, not the church I grew up in, but I did actually in, in, embrace Christianity. And so then I swung this pendulum swing, I swung over to this other side where I got real judgmental, it's like, you know, because that was the that was the example I grew up with, uh, of being so judgmental, and and then just a situation like you're driving down the road and you see some young guy, and he's he's you know maybe got half his head shaved and and purple hair on one side and 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 all this kind of stuff. It was really easy for me to judge them, okay. And and I and I and sometimes I could actually crack up laughing as I drove by somebody, and then I had this little thought this take place inside my mind is hey hey dude that was you <laughs> you know back when I was partying hard that was you because I was trying to stand out in the crowd uh, you, you know uh, well I shouldn't say stand out in the crowd I was trying to be different I was trying to find my place in life okay and and so it's really easy to look at somebody that that, that wants to wear purple hair or whatever and to, to size them up and judge them really easily but then if you sat down with that person, talk to them for five minutes, then you could actually fall in love with them because you don't know what kind of crap that they may have crawled through in order to get to the place where they're at in life. And they're just trying to find out who they are. They're just trying to discover, <laughs> who am I? Where, you know, I'm on this big ball. It's called Earth. But where do I fit in on this Earth? Who am I? Who am I going to be? You know, And... Uh, Hopefully they don't destroy themselves in the process of, of getting that figured out and, and uh, you know, get onto an even path. So, anyways, I'll let somebody else talk. Yeah, that's, that's a great uh, story. And I just lost my train of thought. But <laughs> I, I totally know what you're talking about. You know, there's like this. I, I, I think that's part of why I was so quiet growing up because I just like to listen to people and... Um, it, it's totally true. Like when we judge people, their story is completely different than the story we make up in our heads. So it's, it's. Uh, I think that's part. I really love to just hear people's stories as a child. I would just listen, and I was scared to share my own, um, but enjoyed others. And um, I remember throughout the conversation today, one of the affirmations that I have. Uh, in my list that I listen to every morning of my recorded voices, I am a great storyteller because one of my mentors once said, you know, that's what attracts people to you is being able to share your story and it takes practice and you can have an affirmation around it and this and that. So I think, you know, because I, like Samantha said in the beginning, like I'm not that kind of person and I'm still not who can just hang out and around the campfire and start like blabbing off stories, you know. Um, so it's something that I, I'm working on and I feel like, yeah, it takes practice. Share a little blip here and a little blip here and um, and you'll you just get better at it. And um, so if anyone wants to make it an affirmation, I am a great storyteller. <laughs> That's such a great idea, Sandy. I love it. Um, we're coming up on Well, actually, we're right at the top of the hour. So um, before we wrap it up, though, I want everybody to just have an opportunity to you know, say a few final words if you want to jump on out, and then we can wrap up for today. What, what a great uh, call we had today. Something that I'm practicing right now and we're doing as a, a team with our business is everybody's creating their own video, um, a one-minute video telling your story and then looking at yourself and watching yourself tell your story and that will tell you where you can improve your story and how you're presenting yourself. Are you insecure with your story? Do you have conviction in your story? Do you share things that are of value to other people in your story that will compel them to say, wow, this person's awesome or I can relate to them? So that's just an idea for today and, and really enjoyed it, what everybody had to say today. Awesome call. Um, that's that's really a good point what you just said Danielle and um, I'll just say really quickly you know one of my mentors really sh kind of shared how you can 
package your story, right? So I just want to give a quick formula in packaging your story. One, because you know, you just said one minute, and most people will be like, "How the heck do I say my story in one minute?" So listen, a good formula is before I blank, I was blank, or I did blank. The first thing I noticed was blank. Since then, I have blank. But the best part is blank. I can just fill in the blanks. Literally, you can get that and you can package your story really quickly um, by using that formula. Wow, great. That's really going to be helpful. Thank you. I'll, I'm going to use that. Danielle, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Uh, take your you know, challenge and do that one-minute video. And I'm probably not going to be posted it on on YouTube or anything like that because um, because it is you know emotional and I don't know how to tell it yet but I'm going to use all these all these helpful hints to do that so thanks a lot everybody and I hope everybody has a great weekend it's been really terrific uh, being on the call and um, I love you guys I really uh, hope you have a great weekend and a, and a great week all right Yeah, time flew today. <laughs> but thanks for everybody who watched out there and who will watch in the future. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say any more because I already feel like I flapped my jaws quite a bit today. But anyway, thanks for coming today. I enjoyed it. Yeah, great discussion. And for those that are watching, uh, hope I'm sure you pulled something from this because as I was used to watch, and I'll probably go back to watching it at some point, but there was always some takeaway to each one on the panel that I was just say resonated with me during the week and as I said as I asked that question earlier don't you know if I would give a tidbit of advice to anybody don't ever let the first impression be the last impression and going back to that one minute story I've already tried that it, that's, that's difficult don't think it's easy <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell your story in one minute I went two minutes so there you go I enjoyed the day, everybody. Really did. <laughs> yeah, this has been a great, great discussion. And uh, yeah, you're right, Donna. It's nowhere near as easy as it seems like it is. Um, that's why I try to use that formula to help me compact it. Um, I will say this to your point about the lasting impression. Hey, that's a really good point. And so one way to help you do that is to build relationships. Because when you build relationships, you, so, you most likely you get a do-over, right? So, you know, invest more time in building relationships so that you do have that opportunity. Everybody has an off day. Everybody say, say something? Okay, good. <laughs> oh, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate uh, all of your comments and, and thoughts and lessons that we've passed on to everybody out there today. And uh, I just want to say thank you to those of you uh, watching on the on the page today. Thanks, Christopher and Lou and Rhonda. I'm so glad that you guys would uh, hang out with us today. And um, before we go, I just want to mention a couple of things. First of all, um, Christina, if you would post that um, that formula in our community, and um, for those of you who are not sure where our community is, you can find us at MindsetMasteryCollective.com. That is our Google Plus community, and um, yeah, so if you could post that in there, Christina, and then anybody else, if you have any comments that you want to add to this discussion, um, the pre-mastermind discussion will still be the pinned post in the community for the next um, day or two, and then uh, and then we'll start the conversation for next week. But um, everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. Join our community, like our uh, like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, what else do I want to add? Wait, I have notes here. Subscribe, join, like the video, leave us a comment, <laughs> add to the community. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, with that, have an awesome and amazing, wonderful weekend. And then we'll see you again next week. Meet us at SaturdayMorningMastermind.com. That's always going to be the uh, the current live video page or the live event page for you. I usually change it on Tuesday to be next week. So um, with that, have a great day, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye.